Hi, I'm Adam Meyer of Mill City Luthery in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the project I have today is a Gibson Les Paul. Uh, the situation is we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and this guitar was left at a studio space where the temperature and humidity weren't being monitored and it got really hot and dry and the neck now has a pretty severe back bow to it. The, the guitar just isn't playable at all. All the strings just completely spread out. It doesn't matter how high you bring the bridge up or anything. Uh, loose truss rod, nothing works on it. So I'm going to show you how you go about diagnosing the situation with straight edges and things like that in the next scene. And after that, uh, I'll be getting out my neck jig and a heating blanket. Um, the idea is the neck jig will hold the neck forward in a plane position and the heating blanket will then warm up the glue seam between the neck wood and the fingerboard wood. And you take some time, you don't rush it, but the idea is you get that glue to soften up with the heat, turn the heat off and let it harden again, and hopefully you can manage to bring the neck forward back into a correct playable adjustment. So here I'm going to try and show you what's going on. We have the truss rod is loose. I actually threaded it out quite a bit. I'm not going to take it off, I'm going to leave it there. Um, put a straight edge on Let's see how it rolls back and forth on the middle frets actually take a measurement here with my relief gauge to show you how much and sitting with the neck on the neck rest it's about 15 thousandths back bowed. When you take it off the neck rest, it's about 11 thousandths. There's a little bit of weight pushing down on the neck, so that's why you have a little bit of discrepancy there. So to explain what's going on here, I'm going to use some high-tech graphics. Your truss rod is actually a rod that does not go straight through the neck. When it's glued in, the wood on top of it is curved, and you kind of press the truss rod into a curve. And when you tighten the nut here, what you're doing is trying to straighten out the truss rod, which then pushes up on the wood in the middle. So when you have a neck like this that is dried out and back bowed, your truss rod is basically straight. And that's why you can't, you know, get your proper playability or relief. All it wants to do is just keep pulling back out of playability. So that's what we're trying to correct here. Now, there are a few things to remember when having this done. There might be extra charges when you have work like this done, if you ever have a guitar go through this. When you warm up a fingerboard, the wood will shrink a little bit and your fret ends will stick out the side. So you may end up with a little bit of finish damage um, when you have to have the, the, the frets trimmed off on the end. And... Um, when you try and get the relief back in, there's no guarantee that the frets are going to remain level. You may end up needing a fret dress after this. There's no guarantee one way or the other, but first we got to get that, that truss rod adjustment corrected because it's just not playable until you do that. So the next step that I'm going to do on this is I, I have it all set up in my neck jig and I'm going to apply some forward pressure and see that this flexes really well. It is not a, an especially stiff piece of wood and I'm going to measure it. Always take notes and measure everything as you're going along here and I'm going to try and get it to where the neck is basically straight and I'm without heat. I'm going to let it sit for the rest of the weekend. I'm, I'm filming this on a, a Saturday. And I'm not going to be doing anything tomorrow. I don't want to have to monitor the heat on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit in the jig with uh, an extra humidifier running in this room. I'm going to close off my shop area and try to get the humidity up a little higher than normal. As it's saying, you know, sitting in what should be a normal area where it should be relaxed when the truss rod is loose. I'll be closing off other areas so I don't over humidify other guitars. Um, it's just in this area where I'm having this. Now, there are no actual rules on how to do this. Uh, I've done a bunch of these over my career. 
Um, they all react differently. Some you can heat them once and, and you're done. There have been others that have gotten to the point where you're heating it every day for like two, three weeks and it just isn't budging. And at that point, you have to do something as drastic as pull the frets, re-level the fingerboard. There's even once on a, a 60s Esquire where we had to remove the fingerboard and re-level the neck wood and put the fingerboard back on just to get it playable again. Hopefully none of that is going to happen with this guitar. Um, my plan is always to start off gently and gradually get more and more aggressive. So that's, that's this first step on this, this instrument. Um, there were a couple neck breaks that have been taken care of. So I also want to allow those to kind of sit and harden up really well for a couple more days as I try and get this to correct itself. Real quick update on this. I uh, started off after the neck repairs on this, which as I said are not part of the video. I uh, started off at roughly a negative 14 back bowl, neck going backwards out of play. Um, if you read the gauge from zero, you're kind of doing it opposite. A, a, a negative or a back bowl will read positive and the relief we need will read negative. We'll go this way. So we started at about negative 15 and we're at about negative five now. So I'm gonna put this all back together. Um, I started heating this on a Monday and today is Friday morning. So one work week, five days, that's how much progress. These all react differently. Uh, I don't expect to be into the, the zero or positive range on relief until after the weekend if everything goes well, if this is still going to keep moving. But so far, it is working. Just have to be patient. All right, I got the guitar back together, all strung up. So what happened since the last clip is I took the guitar, uh, released tension on the neck, and just let it sit for a while. The reading with the, the relief gauge was about one to two thousandths relief forward bow. And so I just let it sit for maybe three to four days to make sure it wasn't going to revert back at all. Uh, I then put strings on and with string tension it pulled forward to about 12 thousandths relief, which is really good. So I adjusted it, brought, got maybe like half a turn to get the neck to about eight thousandths to seven thousandths relief. And then I let it sit for a few more days. It has held. All this is are good signs. So I contacted the customer about how he'd like to proceed. So I'm gonna show uh, some of the, the side effects of a heat treatment that will be addressed before this project is over. So one side effect of the heat treatment is that uh, inlays can come loose. Um, it's not that you can't feel it or video. Let's see if I can show it here. You can see this uh, corner is a little loose. So I'll need to run a little super glue along these edges and press them down, get them held into place. This happens a lot when uh, guitars dry out, but in this case, so it's from a guitar being heat treated. Moisture will leave the fingerboard and you end up with your fret end sticking out the side of the neck. You can see the, the little gap of light there between the ruler and the side of the neck because the fret ends are sticking out. So I'll need to bevel the fret ends, get the side of this neck all nice and, and smooth again because we've got these little sharp edges poking out all up and down the neck. Not a big deal, happens all the time. Okay, and this is the last side effect of the heat treatment. As you can see, I have the truss rod loose and there is plenty of good gap between the straight edge and the frets through here. So this is this is really good. There's a lot of room there uh, for adjustment. And you can see I'm sitting on the last fret, the 22nd, and I'm sitting on the first fret up there. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten this truss rod. 
and we have a playability issue. As you can see here, we still have gap. It reduced quite a bit. Still touching on the 22nd. But up here, the third and fourth fret, the straight edge now rests on those. So when this is all strung up, it, it the strings buzz on these frets a lot. So it needs a fret dress. And I'd say probably 75% of the time, especially if, if a guitar was this severe of a case, it will need a fret dress to follow up the heat treatment. Uh, it, it's nothing to worry about. I've done it a bunch of times. Just kind of showing you the, kind of the, the extremes of what it takes to get this guitar back to playing condition. Final result, the guitar is back playing, resurrected from the dead. Uh, went through, you've seen plenty of videos on how fret dress is done and everything. Uh, but, uh, everything plays great on it now, ready to go to the customer. So if you have a guitar where it's been left to get too dry, too hot, too cold, uh, and the neck goes out of whack on it. Uh, if you don't live local to me, check with somebody in your area, a professional, who has done uh, a heat treatment on a neck. It, it can save the guitar. You don't need to throw it out. Um, this guitar, as you saw with the straight edge, there are areas where the frets were really uneven. Uh, I would recommend that when it comes time for this to be refretted, that you level the fingerboard. That will make things even better yet. Um, always try to keep your guitars in a well-controlled uh, environment, not too hot, not too cold. The humidity is controlled. Uh, the reason, another reason why I was taking so long with this is it is super cold and dry here in Minnesota as I'm filming this. I wanted to make sure that this was able to sit and that it did not revert one way or the other, that it actually got to sit in a controlled environment through this weather that it was going to be stable. So uh, any further questions, you can contact me uh, at millcitylutheri.com and uh, we'll see you in the next video.